Hello everyone uh, and welcome to the third uh, video of the series I'm making about tutorials and tips about the academic method. Uh, in this video today we're going to speak about uh, how to properly tone a watercolor paper uh, to use with uh, white chalk and charcoal in order to draw the figure or draw the cast in the studio room. Uh, toning a paper is one of the biggest problems I've ever seen in uh, the academy. Uh, nobody knows exactly what to do. Uh, and I think it's an important issue for this video. Uh, how are we going to think about toning our papers? Uh, in order to have a, a good uh, value to use in our uh, model figure drawing or in the cast uh, drawing that we're doing, we need to be somewhere in between of the value scale. What do I mean about value scale? I'm using the hue value chroma chart of uh, the master system. The master si system is a system that a painter and a scientist in a way created in order to help painters and people that actually draw or paint or whatever to make it easier. And today we're going to use only one of the three aspects of this system, which is the value aspect. As you can see, the values are divided from darker to lighter, and we have to think which value will work for us. Logic uh, says that uh, if you tone a paper very dark, uh, you have to use a lot of white chalk, which is something you don't want uh, neither in the model room because you don't have enough time neither in the cast room because you have to build up layers and layers and layers of white chalk in order to have a realistic effect so we want something in the middle and if we check the the card I don't know if you can see the values properly because they are glossy we have to be somewhere here between value 5 and value 6 so, because I, I remember from uh, last year, students uh, toned their papers, I was still in a charcoal, uh, just charcoal and not white chalk. Uh, teacher saying to them, like, oh no, this paper is too dark, or this paper is too light, and it can't work, so you have to tone it again. Or you tone it uh, very badly, and it doesn't work. So, about uh, two months ago, I went into uh, an OCD mode, I would say. I took stripes of uh, watercolor paper, arches to be specific. I cut them down and I started with 5 ml of uh, Indian ink, which we use. I'm using this of uh, Winsor & Newton. I have no idea if it's uh, the best or the worst or... I don't know, I just took it. I think it works pretty well. You can do it with another Indian ink if you like. And water. So, I started with 5 ml of Indian ink, 5 ml of water. I mixed it, then I put a stripe with this color. Then I added 5 uh, ml of water more. Again, 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 until the tone was somewhere between 5 and 6. Which should work in my opinion, when I thought about it back then, because it's a mid-value and that's what we want. So after 60 tests, if I'm correct, I found a ratio that works every time, of course, and the ratio is 300 ml of water to 5 ml of ink only. Because I've seen people mixing, even in uh, in uh, workshops or whatever that we actually had, like taking the bottle of the ink, open it, go like this, ah, it should be okay. Yeah, but that, with, that, with this way, you never know if your paper will be dark or light enough. So, because I don't have the experience to actually uh, count ML by eye, I wanted to actually test it before use it. So, what do I use? Like I said, I use Indian ink, water of course, and I just cut 
two bottles of water, one small for the ink and one big for the water, because it doesn't uh, the syringe the syringe uh, doesn't fit. And like I said, a syringe. You can have a smaller one or a bigger one; it doesn't matter. Uh, but this is in order to count properly how many ml of water or ink are you gonna use. So like I said, I used 300 ml of water and 5 ml of ink. Then, I'm making my mixer into a bowl. And as you can see, look how dark the mixer is, only with 5 ml of ink. So don't overdo it with the ink because you're gonna have a black paper and I want to say this, don't try to tone a non-watercolor paper. I've heard some uh, stories, myths, I don't know, that someone properly toned a Roma paper. With Roma paper is a pastel paper. I don't know how they did it. A friend of mine last year tried it and the paper went completely black. So if you find a way, please let me know in the comments below because I really like this paper. So if you can tone it, even better. In the previous uh, video I made, I showed you how to properly stretch the paper and this is how we start in this video also. I remind you what do I use about stretching. I use the gum tape. You can find in a proper art store or in a frame or supply store. A scissor to cut the length and the width of the tape I'm going to use. Uh, the makeup pad in order to wet the tape because as you remember I don't dip the whole tape inside the water because it's gonna get out eventually <coughs> and for toning the paper I use this kind of foam brushes in the academy <coughs> the teacher suggests that we tone the papers with a, bra with a, a sponge I tried it. I tried both. Uh, no, I tried sponge way. I tried uh, with a regular brass, like a soft bristle brass or whatever, to tone it. And I tried with this brass also. Uh, with the regular brass, the problem is like you leave a lot of marks on the paper and it doesn't hold a lot of water, so you cannot go from one side to another. With the sponge, which Everybody swears that it's the most easy way. Uh, I find it more difficult and you don't have the same control as you have with this. Because when you tone your paper, you're going you're gonna to see that in the beginning there's a lot of ink with water everywhere and you get in a panic mode and you don't know what to do. So then with the, with the sponge, you dip it once, you go, blah, 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 blah. You, then you you take the excess water out and then you go again but when you go again what you're actually doing is apart from uh, unifying the paper to look pretty which is okay you want that you're actually taking away some of the mixture of water with ink so your outcome is not the value you actually uh, uh, want to make that you tested and you want like a value 5 or a value 6 but it's a lighter value so I don't see the point uh, of making that. Because I've seen papers perfectly unified, but super light. I don't know. If you want to do something like that, do it. Uh, for me, this works better because you have the ultimate control. Uh, it's actually a brass. It has a handle and everything, as you can see. And it's actually, I uh, think in between, between a sponge and between between a brass, so it's because it's a sponge brass. <laughs> okay, uh, you can find these brasses in a proper art shop. They are in uh, three or four sizes, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, the bigger, the better. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, so uh, another thing. Why do we have to? tone the paper uh, in a value between 5 and 6. Why is this correct or uh, why is it wrong? Seriously, it's not correct, neither is wrong. 
but it works for most cases. For example, I am going to do now soon enough a drawing of, a, of my girlfriend and the picture is on purpose, uh, super light in value, so even my shadows are uh, lighter than uh, the light mid-tones we use with the light situations at the Academy. So if I actually tone my pepper in a, in a value like this, this will be almost like my background in this drawing. So I have to think differently with this pose. But this is a personal project, so I can do whatever I want in a way. But in uh, the academic lighting, the academ the, our academy's lighting, basically, a value between 5 and 6 works perfectly. Okay, uh, I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, the next part, we're going to take a, a small break in order to, for me to set up in the next room to actually tone the paper and show you how to do it. See you in a bit. Welcome back. As you can see, I'm on the floor. <laughs> and here I have my board with my artist paper taped on it like we showed in the previous episode. Basically this time I didn't uh, wet the paper first because I was lucky enough uh, to buy some sheets of paper from a friend of mine from the academy that they were completely flat inside a plastic envelope. So when I took them out they were perfectly flat so I just put the gum tape. But if you take it from an art store and they actually roll it Try the way I showed you in the previous video. Here I have my mixture that I showed you and the foam brush. The foam brush, a little trick I actually learned with uh, making mistakes in previous papers that I don't. It's like don't hold it like this, okay? Because as you can see the tip is like, like a scone uh, Thing. So you have not enough water on the edge. So I'm holding it from here. You can get yourself, your hands a little bit dirty, it's okay. I'm dipping all the brush inside and I take a big, a big quantity. And I will start from this edge, going like this, with a lot of uh, water and ink. And as I go, I will dip again, maybe again, maybe three times or four times. Then when I finish, I will go again on the top and lightly uh, even it out, even it out. Okay? And then I'm gonna leave it, that's it. Uh, another thing I used uh, this time is like when you tape the gum tape on your board, you don't actually consider if it's vertical with the paper so when you take out the gum tape at the end you see like one side is two centimeters wide and the other one is 0 0.3 centimeters wide so what did i do i took measurements on top of my board and i left 0 0.5 uh, millimeters of paper uh, tape in order to have more space for my drawing Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna dip my brush a lot. I'm gonna mix it with my brush a little bit and I'm gonna start. You have to be fast enough uh, in order not to leave a lot of marks because when you go once, two, then you go again and you leave it dry a little bit, again, again, you're gonna leave a lot of marks. So, let's start. I'm using an old brush to mix the mixture. I'm dipping my brush and let's go. Second time. Third time. And now that I have everything covered, I go again lightly. Keep 
take away the excess water and ink that I have in some areas. As you can see now it's pretty dark, but it won't be that dark when it dries. I use a lot of mixer, that's why I'm going a lot of passes. But because I go once in all the paper and then leave it, it has the tone already, I'm just taking away what I don't want. And we're ready. Now we just have to leave it dry and then come take properly the gum tape out and see what we did. See you again in about, I don't know, 20 minutes or something, but it will be less in the video. See you soon. Welcome back. As you can see, the result. It's a perfectly unified value five something, five and a half in the master value scale. Uh, the paper is not completely yet dry. As you can see here, it's uh, like a bump. But I want to show you, to take the opportunity to show you how to take off this tape. Because uh, I figured out a way to take it off properly uh, without leaving this gum tape on top uh, and it's actually pretty easy what do I do? as you see on the back I have a little bit of tape also so what I'm doing is I'm trying to take out the tape from the back because the, the normal way to take uh, out this gum tape is to wet it again from the top this time so it will be moist again and then you can peel it off but if you do that you're gonna wet also unless you have like, uh, I don't know like super exact uh, way of doing it without touching the paper if you do it and wet the paper you're gonna get off a little bit of the ink now that I said that, there is also a different me method my friend uh, and uh, amazing artist Tobias Berman told me one day that you can actually put one single drop of uh, water soluble uh, glue into the mixture of ink and uh, water in order to make the tone permanent. What do I mean permanent is like when, when we start drawing and want to erase something and then again and again and again and again you will see that you will take a little bit off the tone I've never tried this uh, this way, I should because if it works it's gonna be even better and I want to try to see the results so what I'm doing is like I'm going from the outside to the inside, try to peel off the tape. 
side by side. So now that I have the side built, it, you can take it away immediately. So as you can see now, I have the 0.5 millimeters on top of white paper that I can actually use to stretch my paper in the board of the academy, which is very helpful to not lose uh, space for this. Another thing that I forgot to tell you about uh, before is, la is about the tone of the, of the paper. How do you think, when you have a specific uh, pro project, what tone should your paper be? And one of my teachers in the academy, basically one of my favorite teachers in the academy, uh, an amazing painter, drawer, uh, craftsman, digital artist, Dorian Eiten, told me that the tone of your paper should be the value of uh, your dark mid-tones, uh, meaning the mid-tones that come right next to the terminator line of the shadow line. So if you think that your paper is too dark, maybe you're, maybe you're wrong because just take a picture of one of your finished projects, put it in Photoshop, go next to the terminator line and see how dark actually the value should be. I did it uh, yesterday and believe me I was surprised. Okay. I know it's a time-consuming pro uh, process and it needs a lot in order to do it properly. But my my tip is like make two or three batches of water to ink, meaning like the original ratio is 300 ml water to 5 ink, 5 ml ink. Make uh, 900 ml water to 15 ml of ink and tone 6, 7, 8, 10, how many papers you want. I made uh, two batches of this and I toned 3, 4, 5, 7 papers in one day. So, as you can see, now, I don't know if you can see it properly, but it's a perfectly toned paper, which I'm going to leave again flat to take uh, its original size because it's still a little bit wet. Uh, usually after this I take the paper and I use a regular uh, artist tape and tape it in a, on the wall or in a board to stretch it. And then I take it to the academy like that. In, a, in an envelope. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, everything I, want, I wanted to tell you about how to turn your paper. Uh, I hope you're successful in this. It takes a little bit of uh, practice in the beginning, so if you want to tone one paper, take at least two, because uh, the first one won't be so good. And have fun with your next projects. Uh, see you soon in another video I'm going to make, which is going to be a surprise. Thank you so much.